Hello everyone and welcome to a new Castlevania Symphony of the Night update video. It's been a long time, old one. It has been a bit longer since the last update video, so thanks everyone for your patience. I did get sick for a period of time with a very bad cold, or at least I think it was a cold. I also recently started a new job which always takes a bit of time and energy away, but I've also been working on the project, albeit more low level programming stuff. I will elaborate on that later on in the video, but for now let's take a look at the Alchemy Lab. What you're seeing right now is a brand new area for our Mega Drive version of the game and a brand new enemy too, the Blood Skeleton. But before talking about him, let's first take a look at the new hub. One change you probably already noticed are the new sub-weapon icons. Before you get too excited, unfortunately I haven't actually programmed the sub-weapons in for Alucard to use yet, but I have got the icons in and I'm just cycling through them now by pressing the A button. Some of the sub-weapons, such as the Holy Water, were perhaps a little bit too powerful in the original game, so I might have to nerf them in this version. But there are others which were a little bit too weak, to the point where they weren't really worth using, so if you've got any opinions, let me know in the comments below and I'll look into it. Okay, now let's talk about the Blood Skeleton characters. Now the AI for these guys is very simple, they basically just walk back and forth and they don't really re react to the player or what the player is doing. After programming in the enemy movement, the next order of business was to do the collision with the player. If you want to know how the player and enemy collision is achieved in these old style games, then you can check out my video from last year, Janky Combat at the Coliseum. I won't go into too many details in this video, but you can see that when there is a collision, the player palette changes to a red colour, which is the same as the bloody skeleton. While this effect does look pretty cool, I don't actually plan to have it in the final game, it's more just a, a very obvious sign that the collision detection is working properly. From the fact that the HUD also goes a red colour along with Alucard, you can probably guess correctly that they're both using the same palette. As you know, colour management is a very important part of developing any kind of Mega Drive Genesis game, and Pyrans make good use of the colours by sharing palettes whenever possible. The reason I've made these skeletons stop as soon as they collide with Alucard, which doesn't happen in the original game, is just a little test I've done to make sure that the new collision code is working properly. Unlike the collision code I did last year, this time around I've used much more sophisticated data structures. For the non-programmers watching, don't worry I'm not going to linger on this point too much, except to say that handling RAM in the Mega Drive is very important, it only has 44 kilobytes after all, and the way I've structured the data now and the programming as well as making it much easier to adjust and change the game and create new levels and sections also makes it much easier to keep an eye on what the RAM is doing and to make sure I don't go over that limit. Now getting back to the game itself, you can see here that the I've gotten rid of the old making Alucard turn red when he collides and instead made it so that the health bar will reduce but you can see that it's going reducing very quickly because I haven't got any invincibility frames for Alucard yet. I've been playing the original game quite a lot recently, I've got a long commute so I've been playing it on my PS Vita of all things, but I've noticed while playing that the, the invincibility period of Alucard after being here is actually very short, so I think in my game I would like to make it a little bit more generous for the player. While I haven't decided what the invincibility period for Alucard will be in the end, for now I've made it one second, so you can see that as soon as he collides with an enemy, every second he loses a piece of his health bar. That seems maybe okay, but we won't know until we test it, being combat against enemies etc. Of course, being able to take damage from enemies but not being able to harm them yourself isn't much fun, so it was the attack collision that I wanted to do next. One of the things I love most about Symphony of the Night are the variety of different enemy death animations and I really love this one in particular where the bones just collapse onto the ground in a heap and then reconstitute themselves and he jumps back up again. I should mention at this point that the all the enemy animations and the colours and so on are stuff that I've done myself as a placeholder so afterwards Pyron will do them much better for sure but for now they look okay not too bad. So when the skeletons are crumpled on the floor, they're not going to be hurting Alucard. You can see that at the moment the health bar is not budging, it's staying as it is, and as soon as he gets up again, that's when Alucard starts to take damage. So that's all working well from a programming point of view. 
Apart from the great death animations, one of the things I like most about this skeleton character is the death sound effects. So I like the sound as these bones crumple to the floor. So right now I'm going to cut the music and Alucard's sound effects too, and we're going to take a listen. Well that doesn't sound too bad, you've probably noticed a problem by now listening to that, especially on the part of the sound effects where he actually crumples to the ground. So the way I got these sound effects was by using Audacity, using a PlayStation emulator, DuckStation, cutting the CD music and recording the sound effects as I played the game, but the issue with that is that not only do you get the sound effects you're aiming for but you also record other sound effects too so in this case in the first sound effect where the skeleton crumples to the ground you can also hear Alucard landing that sound effect too mixed in with it which is obviously not what we want it's not ideal another way of doing this would be to rip the game directly the playstation version and just get the clean pure sound effects from the rip of the rom but that has another problem where you rip the rom and the files are all kind of a mess you don't really know which one belongs to which they're not clearly labeled so that can be an issue too i have had someone helping me they have been ripping roms and they volunteered this uh, information to me but they gave me a, a chunk of files but it's very difficult to find the one that you want so if anyone has any better ways of doing this then please let me know okay time to move on to the next section now this section of the alchemy lab level you have seen before but there's a little twist this time as you're about to see. Unfortunately unlike the last section I don't yet have the enemy collision or AI in place for this particular section. Originally I had planned to have all of the enemy AI and collision in place before I put out the video but as you know this video was long in coming so I thought I have enough interesting stuff to show anyway in a, maybe a shorter more concise video. So. I went ahead anyway but in this particular section we still have some interesting stuff to see. Apart from the scimitar skeletons below we also have the bone thrower up top and he's got a bit of a, a weird gait to him, he's looks like he's dancing. As I said before Prime's going to redo those animations so don't worry if it looks a bit janky but what's interesting about this is what you're about to see now as we jump up to this section which was blocked off before in my last build of the game. Fans of the game will no doubt have noticed that it's not just different from my last Mega Drive build of the game, it's also different from the PlayStation and Saturn version. In those versions there was a, a transition between, I won't call it a loading screen, it was just a, a blackout and a reappearance, but since this is all using the same tile set anyway, I thought why not just make it one big section and in a way it makes the Mega Drive version look even more impressive than the 32-bit versions. As you know when doing this kind of demake a lot of the time we're reducing colours, we're reducing all kinds of different things so I'll take these small little petty wins when I can. Obviously this wasn't to do with any hardware limitations on the PlayStation and Saturn's part but um, I just think it was a fun thing just to get one over on the 32-bit versions on behalf of the 16-bit console here. Genesis does what PlayStation don't doesn't quite have the same ring to it does it? By the time the next video drops I really hope to have the X-Man and his AI in because I think he's one of the most interesting enemies of the Alchemy Lab section. He's a, he has a nice challenge, he has this projectile that he can throw at you so I think he's going to be a very fun enemy to program into the game. To finish off the video I want to talk a little about the game design. For those of you who have followed this project since the very beginning, you'll know that very early on I decided to make this Mega Drive version of Castlevania Symphony of the Night a more linear action platformer 16-bit style Castlevania. That means that lots of the level design elements and the enemy placements need to change so in order to prepare for that, last year, I think this was last summer before I even started the channel, I had a look at, I played through Castlevania Bloodlines on the Mega Drive and as you can see on the screen now I basically just drew out the level design in a very simplistic way I'm not the best drawer and if you can read my spider like handwriting then good on you because I, I, even I sometimes can't really understand my own handwriting but I 
pretty much sketched out all of the levels and marks out different mechanics and different enemy placements and boss fights and so on because I wanted to understand what made Bloodline such a fun game to play. I think for that game the levels they're just perfect in length, they don't feel too long or too short, they have lots of enemy variety, lots of uh, background variety so I really wanted to see how many different rooms per level and so on so that was a really interesting experience for me. And later this year I plan to do the same with Super Castlevania and Rondo of Blood and even Dracula, I think it's called Dracula X on the Super Nintendo because that's, for me, that's a bit of a frustrating game. So I want to analyze that to understand why it's so frustrating when compared to say Super Castlevania 4. I used that research on Bloodlines, if you can call it research, to design the alchemy lab level of the game. So whereas the first level, the entrance, very follows closely the PlayStation version. For the Alchemy Lab I had to make a, a few more changes to keep things interesting because obviously the way a Metroidvania is designed is a bit different to what an action platformer is designed. So first we have this enemy here. Now in the original game these are very um, he's very unaggressive, he's very passive, he won't actually attack you even if you turn around. I did a video a, a few weeks back when I played through the PlayStation version of the Alchemy Lab level so I talked a lot about a enemy AI and, and the Alchemy Lab in general there so you can check that out. But So first guy is easy, he's just in by himself and then you have two enemies, the Bone Thrower with the Skimitar Dive the Sword behind. Um, here I'm just using a modified version of the uh, PlayStation graphics here so it's got the spikes that we didn't have in the other video you saw previously but I think I might add them in, in places because it has a nice little platforming challenge but especially this area here where you have to jump between the pillar at the top and the spikes and then we have the X-Men, Axemen not X-Men where we first uh, encounter them we're in a bit more of an open space so you can all you have plenty of room to remove uh, maneuver you can jump over the axe you can maybe head back and then when you get come to him the second or third time you're in this much more enclosed space but you can still maybe jump out of the way and finally you're in this very enclosed space where you can't really avoid the axe you have to unless you, maybe you duck or you have to just time your strike correctly and right so you can destroy the axe so I just want you to see how the difficulty in that part of the level kind of gets slowly rises bit by bit. Now this area here with the blood skeleton, the blood skeletons are a pretty easy enemy normally but because I've put them on these kind of small platforms you have to make sure that you hit them and land on the platform at the same time and then quickly jump off otherwise they'll come back to life and they'll knock you off and damage you. The bloody zombie enemy is pretty easy I think, I never had any trouble with this guy in the original Castlevania. Maybe I'll try to change the AI a little bit but I think he's just good cannon fodder and he has a really cool death animation so not every enemy necessarily has to be very hard and maybe the bloody, bloody zombie enemy can just be a bit of fun. This room is based on the uh, room in the PlayStation version of the game but I've made quite a lot of modifications. First of all these guys here, I'm not sure the name of the enemy but they're, I think they'll be very well placed to be uh, to provide a platform challenge so they're going to rotate round and round these platforms here so you either have to kill them or you have to time your jumpings very carefully plus you're, you've got the poisonous water falling on you at the same time and then I have these guys in this enclosed space so they might prove a bit more of a problem especially the bit you just saw where you fall in between two of them and this room is very similar to the room we saw with the blood skeletons but this time with the bone throwing guys so as soon as you land on these middle platforms here they're going to start throwing their bones at you so you have to move pretty quickly or you're going to get hit and then we have more ex, uh, ex men guys in this enclosed space so I think they'll provide more of a challenge than the bloody zombie guys in a similar space here and then finally just before the boss fight I wanted to have a little set piece and some of you you can probably recognize the shinobi 3 influence here with an elevator level with enemies attacking from both sides. I'm not sure if I'll keep the axe men here as the enemy. I think they're quite good because they throw projectiles but if you have any other suggestions or which enemies can be on either side of the elevator let me know and finally you land in the boss fight as usual. 
So I hope it's evident that I've put quite a lot of thought and effort into how the level design is going to be and what kind of enemies are going to appear and where. But of course the real test will be if it's fun to play and if it's challenging enough and not too challenging for a level 2. And just as I was about to finish editing this video I got a very nice surprise from Tenno Co, one of our musicians on the game. And he put out a brand new track, Death Ballad. So I'd encourage everyone to go and listen to it, it's really amazing. I think all the music's been amazing for this, uh, for this project so far and this one is no exception. And last but not least, I got another surprise as I was about to finish editing the video when Pyron sent me these new sketches of the enemies for the Alchemy Lab. So the most important thing when doing any kind of enemy for the Mega Drive are the palettes. So you can see here he's done it in 16 colors, which is what all the sprites need. But even more impressive for these skeleton enemies, he's managed to use the same palette as Alucard. And what's great about that is that it means we don't have to use a single 16 color palette to share between all of the enemies of the Alchemy Lab that appear on screen at the same time. So for example with the green axe guy, Axe Lord, we can have him as his own palette so he can have all those plenty beautiful green and orange details and the same with the blood zombie as well, the blood skeleton. Oh and before I leave you I should just mention that I have uploaded two ROMs of the first two sections of the game featured in this video so I hope you will have fun with them and I will see you next time. Farewell.